so I'm too lazy to set all my camera stuff up and do all of that and put out proper lighting and it's nighttime anyway so I'm just going to tell you what's going on in this video in my glasses and my pajamas with my uncombed hair because professionalism who needs her um anywho so basically in this video it's going to be a vlog I'm going to read um three books three books recommended to me by Miranda Reads um The Princess Bride First Life by Gina Showalter and Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn um, two of these books Miranda enjoyed and one she didn't and my goal of this vlog is to figure out which one she didn't. It's kind of like two truths and a lie but with books so without further ado enjoy. Okay so I'm not actually starting Miranda's books yet I'm in the middle of a book called A Star is Bored by I think it's Byron Byron Lane I believe um but I'm going to start Miranda's books after I finish this book. Um, but on the book I'm reading, it's interesting. It's about, it's from the perspective of um, a personal assistant. Um, a personal assistant to, um, what's her name? Kathy Cannon, which isn't a real celebrity. But anywho, and it's about his journey and all of that. It's interesting. I am a little frustrated because Kathy Cannon is a mess like she has a drug addiction she's super she is um bipolar disorder and all of that and i'm not saying those are bad things but almost feels to me like it's being romanticized like it's being s supposed to be seen as um oh she's funny this is fun this is all quirky and and it's fine but i don't think it is i don't know we'll see also i'm making a um a bracelet while I listen. Are you taking a nap, Luna? Luna's just so sleepy. So I just finished um, A Star is Bored by Byron Lane. Byron? Byron? I don't know. I think I'm going to go with f four stars. Yeah, I think four or three point five stars out of five. Um, I was actually kind of close to DNFing it because it was, as I said earlier, it almost felt like they were romanticizing um, addiction and toxic drinking and all of that. But as I got further into the book, I kind of realized they weren't. And I was a little frustrated with the way um the main character continued to stay with um what's her name i'm really bad at character names the celebrity that he's um assisting because she was like being super foolish um and i understand that she had underlying mental illnesses but it was still i was like uh, and i was like she's obviously not a good influence and all of that but it all kind of got worked out in the end, which I appreciated. It, it was a very realistic but happy ending, which I appreciated as well. So I would say it's a good book. Um, if you get tri if you've had any sort of alcohol or drug addictions, I wouldn't recommend reading it. Um, there is um, bipolar disorder. There are a few times where she's manic, which could be potentially triggering to some. Um, it is also very vulgar. There's a lot of talk about sex and all of that stuff. So, yeah. But other than that, I recommend it. It's about 12 hours long. So it's not that long, especially if you're listening to it on triple speed. But yeah, I enjoyed it. And now I'm going to read, um... First Life by Gina Shoal Walter because I think that's the book that Miranda hates because I know how much she hates Gina Shoal Walter. So we'll see. Emma Galvin is the narrator for First Life. Well, her along with um, the other guy whose name I forgot, which is exciting because Emma Galvin is um, a really good narrator, but also she was like the first narrator that I not the first narrator, the first audiobook I remember listening to on my own, like, of my own choice, 
was narrated by her. So she's a very nostalgic narrator. Um, also, I just realized I don't know anything about this book. I'm going into it totally blind. So we'll see what happens. I feel like I should read a synopsis or a summary, but I'm not going to because I'm lazy. We just got this huge tree cut down. There used to be a whole tree and it was like, see this tree? There's another one like that right here. And even the stump is gone. It's crazy. And there's hay here. So the, oh, whoa. The ground is kind of soft here. Anywho. And then that's all the wood from the tree. So many trunks. We are glad we got it cut down, though, because I don't really know if there are any trunks where it shows. But basically, the, the center of the tree was rotting um so it's a good thing we got the tree cut before it fell on the house because that would have been bad and then right here there's the piles of mulch which i don't know why they put it here because there's a path right there so i guess no one can use that path anymore um i stepped in that mulch like i walked up the pile and it hurt because i was barefoot which was definitely a bad idea so yeah, and then over there are Thomas and Donna. I'm, I was so nervous that when they were cutting down the tree, they would squish Tama and Tama, Thomas and Donna, but they didn't, which is good. Thomas is doing well. The apple is doing well. There's another one up here. It's not doing so well. It's kind of like there's a little bit of rot and I don't know where, what it is or where it came from. Like, I noticed there's a little bit of dust on it the other day, or not the other day, like weeks ago, I saw a little dust and I wiped it off, and then where that dust had been, it just started rotting. I don't know why. And then over here is Donna. Hello, Donna. Um, she's doing fine. She's leaning towards the sun. Both trees are, kind of. Actually, most trees, like this one, they all lean that way because when the sun is over there, that's where the sun is. That didn't make sense. Um, yeah, so she's leaning for sure in that direction. I have a little string tied because I think, like, she would probably fall without that string. Um, well, not, maybe not, but just in case. some It's just some support until she's bigger and she can stand up on her own. Um, Tana, Thomas has um, a string, two strings actually, because it's on a hill, so I don't want him to fall over. Yeah. I hear a bird. Or is that the tree squeaking? I legitimately can't tell if there's a bird up there or... Anywho. Yeah. So, I'm going to take a break from reading um, so I can play piano because... I need to practice. Um, so far, my thoughts are, it's not horrible. Like, it's not so ridiculously bad. But I'm not, not really enjoying it. It's just, it's like the, it's just kind of cliche. It's the um, cliche dystopian YA fiction. Um, it doesn't feel original to me. It's boring. Um, and it feels just unoriginal, not creative, um, and I hate the main character, so we'll see. I just finished playing piano. My wrists and fingers hurt. I, ooh, I love playing piano, but ow. I'm doing chords too, which takes a lot more, not strength. There's not as much, what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? preciseness you don't need to be as precise so I kind of hit the keys harder and I have to switch between chords faster anyway my research I'm gonna try to make myself lunch um, I haven't gotten much further in first life but we'll see how it goes I can't tell if the author is purposely trying to make it seem like um, main character what's her name I don't care has OCD or not because it feels like that and if she tried to do that, if she's trying to make her character of OC, then don't like that. Either way, I'm not a fan. I didn't actually get that much reading done since the last check-in. Um, I was kind of worrying. Um, I 
as as I've said in other videos, I have occasionally, well, I have OCD, and I occasionally get, ew, ew, it's, <gasps> ew, oh my gosh, gross. Look at that, that's so nasty. I don't know what those are. There's some sort of mite. Gross. What are these? Hold on, I'm gonna Google to see what these are. I mean, oh wait, shoot. According to Google, these are striped carpet beetles. No, that can't be it. I think that's wrong. Hold on, I need to keep Googling, but ew, what the heck are, like, these are seriously so gross. And you get to see them in high definition, you're welcome. The gross thing is they're, they're like, moving in, like, a pack in this just same group. It looks like those bigger black ones are, like, the leaders, and they're children, and they're definitely the same bug. Ugh. I asked my Instagram followers if they know what it is, because I have no clue. Google proved useless, um, though I might try taking a picture in reverse image searching. We will see. So what I was saying before I grossly touched those gross bugs was, um, I have OCD and sometimes I get in spirals. Hello. Editing Tucker here. Um, and I'm editing this like a week after I filmed it, and funnily enough, I'm wearing the same shirt I was when I filmed that. I just want to say that I cut out like five minutes of me worrying aloud because it depends. Sometimes I find that it can be helpful for me to say, here's what I'm worried about because some people are like, oh, me too. And it can be encouraging. But this clip of five minutes of me just talking aloud wasn't helpful. It stressed me out and I think it'll stress other people out. So I am cutting it. Have fun with the rest of the vlog. So I attempted to reverse Google image search those bugs and Google's just like, you know what that is? That's a pest. And I'm like, no duh. Ew, a mosquito's trying to bite my phone. You're stupid mosquito. Ow, that was painful. Um, but they're grossing me out and I hope someone responds and says what the heck these are because I'm curious now. Anywho, I'm gonna go back, ooh, go back to reading, what's it called, First Life? It's boring. I don't care about the characters. Why is there this random Irish character? Who knows? It's dumb. Um, I'm not enjoying it. And I think it's, it's just, like, I never would have picked this up on my own. Um, and I'm only reading it because of this vlog. Um, this is the exact type of YA fiction that I hate. The sci-fi dystopian with romance. And I'm just like, ugh, I hate it. Why romance on its own? Shut up. Oh my gosh, those frogs are being so loud. Um, why a dystopian on its own? I don't mind. Why a contemporary romance? I don't mind. But why sci-fi romance? Books like The Fifth Wave or um, Contagion by Terry Terry, which, sorry, it's just a funny name to me. Anyway, I don't like those. They're the exact type of YA books that I don't like, and they're the exact type of YA books that give YA a bad rep. And so I hate this book. But I'm going to continue on because I have about half of it left and I don't think it'll be that bad to finish it. I really want to DNF this book. It's so... Uh, it's just cliche. And... Um, well, it's 11, so I'm off to bed. But I do want to say... um. I still hate this book. Well, hate is a strong word. I am not enjoying it. I'm sick of the characters, and I'm ready for this to be over. I think I have about... Maybe... Hold on, I'm trying to get a better angle. Maybe... Um, maybe six hours left, which is technically two hours on triple speed. So it's not going to be that much more, um, but I'm not enjoying it. So, I, and I do think this is the book that Miranda doesn't like. Um, at least I'm pretty confident that she doesn't. Anywho. <sighs> Good morning. So I just woke up and I haven't started reading yet. Although, I, as I, I still feel the same, I don't want to finish this book, but I'm going to anyway. Um, yeah. 
I'm waiting for my mom to get home because she's getting donuts. So, I'm about uh, 60, 70, 70% 70 into First Life and I still hate it. Um, I'm At this point, I don't think I'm going to DNF it. I'm just going to power through, but I will share my final thoughts in a bit. Um, other than that, I'm about to go to the bank to deposit some money and hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, get a debit card. I don't really know how all of that stuff works. So we'll see. Editor's note, I forgot to mention this. I did not. We went to the bank. It was closed. So we came back and the next week. It was closed again. So we came back again and the drive through was open. But they told us, number one, you have to be 16 to get a debit card. And to make a checking account, you have to have some state-issued license, which I don't have. I won't have it until I have my learner's permit. So basically, I have to wait until I get my learner's permit to get a checking account and to get a job. Um, yeah. So I just finished. Oh, are the bugs still here? I don't want to touch the bugs. I think they're gone. If they land on my head, I will literally scream. Anyway. I just finished um, First Life by Gina Showalter, and it sucked. I think I'm going to go with 2 or 1.5 stars. Probably 2. Um, literally, the only part I slightly liked was literally the final paragraph, and that was it. Everything else was sucky. So, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of where I want to begin. As I mentioned earlier, this book was just... <laughs> on to Sharp Objects by, is it Jillian or Gillian Flynn? I don't know, but it's by her. Um, I'm going to read that one. I'm, I have pretty high hopes. I've heard a lot of good things about it, and I, I'm pretty sure this isn't one of the bad ones that Miranda chose. Um, I, so the final one I have to read after Sharp Objects is The Princess Bride, but currently I have it on hold and it says it shouldn't be here for another 10 weeks. Overdrive or Libby's hold estimator is pretty inaccurate, um, so it could be here earlier, but if it's still, if I finish Sharp Objects and wait a day or two and it still hasn't come, I'll probably either try to find the audiobook on Spotify or on YouTube, and if I can't do that, I probably might just skip it or watch the movie even though i know the movie's probably super different we'll see so eh, don't mind me i'm just turning on the hose we have hit a snag um i my headphones broke these are not mine these my brother's my brother's being nice enough to lend me his while i because i'm mulching a pack but anyway um i usually because my headphones tend to break so i usually um save because usually they break because one earbud breaks and the other doesn't so I save them in case I ever need a pair and don't have one for some reason so I had two pairs of emergency headphones one was taken and it doesn't work it actually stopped working and the other that I was like oh it's okay I'll use those while I wait for new headphones to to come because I'm hoping to buy new headphones those were cut up for a I think a costume or something by someone who I will not name because they will get mad at me but now I don't have emergency pair of headphones, so I am kind of annoyed. Um, anywho, I hopefully will be able to go, get a new pair of headphones soon. <sighs> and hopefully I'll be able to finish the book. I don't know. Basically, there's a snag. I should be fine because I do hopefully have another headphones, other headphones to use. We'll see. <laughs>
Simply Piano. I want to talk about Simply Piano for a second. Oh, I'm so sore. I'm such a weakling. Anyway, um, I wanted to talk about Simply Piano, and I'm not sponsored or anything, huh? Imagine being sponsored. I'm too little for that. Um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, Simply Piano. So, I'm not sponsored, and honestly, I can't see myself being completely sponsored because I think Simply Piano is way too expensive. Um, anywho, Simply Piano. Um, it's basically this app. It's... I told them, I described it to my parents as, like, Duolingo, but for a piano. Um, basically, as you saw, it it shows you the notes, and it does go really, and I, this is a good thing, it goes slow. Um, for me, I can get, I tried to do another online course that was free, and it moved way too fast, it, and it seemed to almost expect you to know certain things. Um, Simple Piano doesn't do that. And they do start from the bare bones. So I actually was a little bored at first because I did play piano for a year. Um, but I have learned a lot of stuff and I have gotten a lot of talent. Right now I'm learning um, chords, uh, which is what you saw. And I also switched back and there are two main chunks. There's chords and then there's pianos. Basically chords and notes. Um, and I've been switching back and forth between both. Basically, Simply Piano, I find it really easy and helpful. Um, and almost, it almost appears childish, and I, because of the bright colors, and I think it is meant for younger kids. I believe that it seems like that's where it's aimed, but I think it's really good, um, and I think it's good for all ages. Um, basically, Simply Piano is, it's good, it's helpful, it is a tad bit expensive, but if you're willing to swing it, um, it's 100, the thing I paid for, I paid for $120 for the entire year. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty expensive, but, um, I definitely recommend if you are looking to play the piano. Ooh. And don't take, don't think, like, look at what I played and think, oh, is that all you're gonna get? Because first of all, I'm not good at piano, um, that's what I'm trying to learn. And second of all, I'm only five lessons in, so it's not like that's, like, the, the cap, the, the, I don't know. Like, I hopefully will get a lot better, but don't take my playing as the the result, because I'm not that great at playing. Anyway. Oh, on to thoughts of sharp objects. So, I'm in... I don't know how to... I'm enjoying it. Like, I'm not, like, straight up loving it, but it is enjoyable. Um... It's reminding me a lot of The Bright Lands by John, John Fram, which just came out, I think, a week ago, and I highly recommend reading that book. Um, it, it reminds me of the, the small town, um, main character comes back. It's really interesting, and I, I, I enjoyed, well, I had mixed feelings on The Bright Lands, but I'll leave the link to my review, um, in the description, but, um, Bright Lands, I enjoyed, let's just say I enjoyed it. Oh, well. There's a little wire here that when I flick it. Anywho, um, ADHD, goodness gracious. Um, did I take my intuitive today? I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm enjoying it. It's very small town mystery, which I'm enjoying. Um, I would say right now it seems to be on track for four stars, maybe 3.5. We'll see. <laughs> So my headphones have just been ordered. They won't be here until Friday. Today's Wednesday. So that's not great. I just found someone's on the table. I don't know whose they are, but I'm going to use them. The unfortunate thing is I have an iPhone. So they have this dumb lightning connector. These headphones are the lightning connector, which is where the charger goes. My phone is about to die, so I need to charge it, which means I can't use the headphones. Oh well. So, I got another weird message from a stranger, which I'm not going to respond to. My headphones still aren't here, so I can't listen to audiobooks, and my allergies are being annoying, so I can't really breathe through my nose. So yeah, that's what's going on. I'm probably not going to update today or tomorrow until I get my headphones and, actually, and I'm actually able to start listening to my audiobook again. For now, I'm going to play piano, and I'll check in whenever something exciting happens. <gasps> Yuck.
my headphones came. Apple headphones are so ridiculously expensive, but I like them. So, I bought them. I did find them at a little bit of a discount, so that's good. Yeah. Um, and obsessive OCD stuff um, that I won't go into, but I didn't really get any reading done today. I did play the piano, as you saw, but other than that, I haven't read anything. I listened to a few podcasts, but yeah, it's been a rough day, so I will hopefully resume reading tomorrow. I did read a little bit of Sharp Objects, and it is, didn't realize how triggering it would be. It was mostly because I was reading it in that anxiety. I think I should be able to handle it now. Um, but it is a huge trigger for self-harm, self-mutilation. Um, so if that gets, if that gets to be too triggering, I might DNF it. I don't think I will, but we'll see. This mother worker. The mother of the main character whose name I can't... Camille. Camille's mother. Adora is her name, I think. Um, she can burn. I genuinely hope she's the killer, and I think it's either her or Emma. Honestly, I would love if they both killed it, and the, or p killed the girls, and then they could both get arrested. That would be... Why can't you see my face? Um... That would be great, because I hate them both, but especially the mother. Um, she is so, so cruel, um, and I understand the whole idea of hurt people hurt people. She's gone through a lot, but it's not an excuse to be cruel. She is so, so freaking mean to Camille, and then she just spoils Emma, who is a complete psychopathic brat. I hate... 
Emma and Adora. The only character I, characters I like are Slightly, Camille, and Richard. Um, also, huge trigger warning for self-harm in this book, because, geez louise, it's, it's a heavy theme, which I kind of should have guessed by the title, maybe, but so far it's not triggering me too hard. Um, self-harm, I'm kind of over. It was the intrusive thoughts that were a little upsetting, but I'm... I'm handling it. I find that fiction isn't as hard for me as fact, but anyway, yeah. Trit. So I want to talk about Emma and Camille's masochism. Masochism. Masochism? They are both masochists, I think, to a point of disorder. So within... It's funny. Sex and mental illness and sexual mental illnesses all interlude and intertwine within sex sexology i think that's a thing there is kinks and bdsm um sexual sadism or like bdsm bdsm and that's a controlled consensual form of causing controlled pain for sexual pleasure and in my opinion you do you, you do that, that's fine as long as there's consent and safe words. But in this case, when both Camille and Emma are harming themselves or others, partly with Emma, it seems to be doing for pleasure. With Camille, it seems to be happening as a coping mechanism. Camille cuts because she finds it almost satisfying. And actually, that was how I started self-harming. I don't self-harm anymore. Um, I haven't self-harmed for I think it's been a year and a half I believe maybe maybe yeah a year and a half um since I had all that stuff um but sh that's how I got into self-harm is I rubbed trigger warning for self-harm by the way I rubbed my skin raw I didn't cut I just rubbed it raw until it would bleed and I liked watching the blood and this sounds so creepy but it was a sensory thing I would watch the blood and then I would also um what the fork? sorry I just noticed a scar and I can't tell if it's new or not anywho um sorry anywho for me, self-harm had started out as a sensory thing, and that's what it seems to be like with Camille, but also a symbolic thing. Um, and then with Emma, it's just almost seems, she almost seems to be a sociopath, a psychopath in my opinion. And I, I think there's definitely something wrong with her personality, because, and I, it seems to be something out of her control. Um, like... I don't think she's just simply a brat because she even said to Camille, I want to stop, but I can't. Like, she generally knows I have a problem. There's something wrong with me. Yeah. So I'm confused. Why is Camille continuing to accept milk that is obviously milk and drinks and food that's obviously been tampered with from her mother, who she knows is obviously a little nuts? who has also been abusive both physically and emotionally. Like, why? Why would you accept food and anything edible or consume anything from this woman even though you know, you know that it's going to hurt you? And why would you not go to anyone? Like, go to Richard. That's his name, right? I've kind of lost track. The, the police guy from Kansas City. And just tell him, hey, I think my mother's a psychopath and has killed these two girls. Why don't you go take her in for questioning? Honestly, I'm surprised you didn't question her in the first place. <sighs> I would like to take a moment to be proud of myself because I freaking called it. Um... Once again, spoilers for all these books. But in the end, it turns out that... What's her name? The mother. Um, Adora, which is such a dumb name. Um, killed Camille's older sister, Marine, Mar Mary, Miriam, Something like that. 
and Emma killed the other girls. Also, apparently it's Emma, A-M-M-A, not E-M-M-A, so I'm going to call her Emma because I don't care. Um, but anyway, I hated them both, and I was like, please, please, please. I, first of all, I was like, I'm pretty sure that they're the killers, but I was also like, please let them be killers because I hate them. Um, and they were the killers, which is great for me. Um, I did want to say that the huge, huge trigger warning for self-mutilation and self-harm because that was a huge theme in the book, which you can kind of tell by, um, from the, the, um, cover and title, but it's never really, it's not ever really addressed, if that makes sense. Like, it's like, oh yeah, this is a thing, but it's not that it's not seen as a bad thing. It's just like, a it's never really dealt with. It's never really settled or resolved. So, Definitely a huge warning um, on that note. Where did I put my glasses? I don't know how I constantly lose them. Well, I don't know where my glasses are, and I need to go to bed soon. So, um, The Princess Bride is the next book, but it has not arrived yet, and it will not be here for, according to Libby, 10 weeks. So, unless I can find... The YouTube, uh, the audio on YouTube or Spotify, I'm probably just going to watch the movie because I'm not going to wait 10 weeks to finish this vlog. Sorry. I mean, school will have already started by then, right? Yeah, definitely. So, we'll see. So, I'm not, the Princess Bride hasn't arrived yet. I am going to read Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire because I want to. And I cannot find The Princess Bride on YouTube or Spotify or Hoopla or Libby. Well, Libby, I have the hold, but it says not going to come till in 10 weeks, which is literally mid-September. So I'm obviously not going to wait that long. Um, I'm going to hopefully, like, sometimes the wait is off and sometimes it comes a lot sooner. So I'll be keeping an eye on that. For now, I'm going to listen to Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. She's had one of the worst head rushes I've had in a while, like... Sometimes they just happen. I, I think it's because I haven't, I haven't drunk, drank, drink, drunk anything for like 12 hours. Um, that's probably it. Um, but I stood up and my vision, and I was expecting a head rush. I was like, I'm probably going to get a mild head rush. But it was like, I was like, my vision blurred. And I was like, good thing I'm near my bed because I literally fell over. Yikes. I'm going to go drink some water. What do you got there, Luna? Is it your stuffed animal? Is it your little dog plushie? Do you want to play? Do you want to play with that? Oh, or maybe you just want to leave. Here. Here. Hold on. <coughs> Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. still in the midst of reading Goblet of Fire. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing today. I also keep having head rushes because I forgot to drink enough water and I think I have low blood pressure, so I'm gonna go drink and do the dishes. Ron is such a dick. He is so rude. Oh my word. He's honestly, I remember not liking him. Why is my face so glowy? I remember not liking him in the first time I read this series, and I like him even less now, because he is so annoying, especially in Goblet of Fire. He makes such a big deal about Harry entering, he makes such a big deal about Hermione going to the ball with Victor Crumb. He's just so annoying, oh my word. So I just finished Goblet of Fire, and I hate Ron. I, 
I kind of had that inkling of that feeling when I started the series, but as I get further and further into this series, I'm like, yeah, Ron is a dick. Um, he's super annoying, and of all the characters that die in this series, he should have been one of them. Um, that's just my opinion. Uh, but yeah, it was good. Uh, as I, now that I'm rereading this series with a different viewpoint, um, number one, it's ironic to me that, because J.K. Rowling is extremely transphobic, um, and I could do a whole video about that, but it's funny to me because most of her characters, especially Hermione, would be literally ashamed of J.K. Rowling and the way she treats, um, trans people. I could, <laughs> yeah, um... Like I said, for Chambers, Chamber of Secrets and Sorcerer's Stone and Prisoner of Azkaban, I think, um, I do love how J.K. Rowling inserts small little clues for what's going to happen, but it's only if you look hard enough um, and if you know what to look for, which I really appreciate. I think that's really cool, and it makes for a really fun reading experience to be um, on the eye out for those clues and then to notice them once the mystery or thing is revealed. Um, uh, I, I, Miranda told me this, but, um, I, I agree, kind of, but basically The Goblet of Fire is the last happy book in the series. From this point on, everything just starts to get depressing and violent, so, oh well. Um, I am waiting for, um, Order of the Phoenix to come. It's supposed to be, um, to Libby, I think, within the next couple days. Um, for now, I'll maybe watch The Princess Bride tonight. Hopefully, maybe. We'll see. Um, because I can't read it. Because I can't find it anywhere online for free. And my library won't have it for weeks. And I'm not going to buy the audiobook because I'm cheap. So, we'll see. It's like... It's just they're terribly comfortable. I think everyone will be wearing them in the future. So the books. Uh, I read, well, I watched The Princess Bride. Cause the, the the audiobook wasn't going to come for like 10 weeks. Um, yeah. Excuse me? Yeah. You did what? I watched it. Tucker. That, well, I told you too. And I said that in my little thoughts ending part of the vlog, I said, I watched the movie, so these are my thoughts on the movie, um, because I, the ebook wasn't available, and the audiobook wasn't available, and I'm too cheap to buy it, so, yeah. Fine. Mm hmm Anyway, um, I read First Life, and I read, what's the other one? Um, Sharp Objects. And so, my ratings are, for Sharp Objects, I gave it, I think it was 3.5 stars. First Life was 1.5 stars, and I didn't really rate The Princess Bride. If you had to rate The Princess Bride, what would it be? By 3.5 stars. You are killing me here! It's... Okay. I, so, I only really liked it, I mean... There's definitely the nostalgia factor, because I, I watched the movie a lot when I was little. But it, it's really kind of silly, and I both liked and didn't. Oh, Tucker. I can't believe you're doing this to me. Okay, so which one, which are my two good ones, and which is my bad one? I think the um, Princess Bride and Sharp Objects are the good ones. Yeah, you got that right. Um, my thoughts on it, Princess Bride, the actual book, is written very oddly. Because you hear about the S. Morganson's classic tale of Princess Bride in the movies. But the book is written from the perspective of a writer who found the classic book and then cut out all the boring parts. So you have these passages where the author goes, and then we have 14 pages where the Countess describes her hats. I skipped it for you. I mean, I'm, it hits my humor just the right way, and I absolutely loved it. However, I told you not to read the introduction, which is a good thing. It's like it paints the author in such an unlikable light 
and it's so long that like my mom read the introduction and she just refused to read the book because she hated the introduction so much which i get anyway that's one of my favorite books sharp objects is such a creepy thriller where i'm like i don't know what's up what's down i am intrigued and i'm invested and first life is absolute trash <laughs> yeah so i i honestly when you gave me the list i was pretty suspicious that it was first life you hated because you always tell me how much you hate gina showalter oh i forgot i told you that mm -hmm. no it's okay. <laughs> I ruined it. I chose the most obvious one. No, it's okay. And actually, for the books I gave you, I purposely tried to find ones that were more vague. Um, yeah. They were so vague that no library in my entire state had them. At least a library that I could access them. What are the ones I picked? I can't so you picked The Shining, which... My library did have that one, but everyone was reading it. Oh, then, did I tell you where I thought of The Shining? I, if you have, I can't remember. I feel like I did, because I forgot that I picked it. Okay, hold on. Let me go grab the other ones. I'll be right back. So, yeah, in order to be able to read these, I had to either buy the book or buy the ebook. And when the ebook is a dollar cheaper than the book, mm -hmm. I might as well buy the book. So now I have The Shining, which... I've already filled my part where I can describe which one I think is the good one. I know that you love Stephen King. However, I this could be a red herring. This could be such a strong red herring because I know you love Stephen King so much. So I'm a little suspicious of it. You also gave me This Tender Land and Little Did We Know. Um, this one seems kind of romancy and kind of sad romancy, maybe. And I know you love romance, which also could be a red herring. <laughs> and the last one, this tender land. This one seems like a historical one, and I know that you generally don't gravitate towards historicals. So this one seems like the obvious bad one, but that could also be a red herring. <laughs> Yeah, I was trying to specifically pick ones that would trick you. Um, uh, I should have. I should have thought. I thought I didn't complain about Gina to you. Oh well. I know that I uh, said something about the shining and what I thought about it in one of your videos, but it's a comment you already responded to, so it should. Be uh, yeah, I remember you mentioning something about it, and me talking about how it just seemed like absolute chaos when I saw the movie. But as far as the exact one, I don't remember. Um, okay, I'm going to go through my basic thoughts. So, First Life, it's books like those that kind of give Y a bad vibe, in my opinion. It's, it's, it's that, like, I hate when authors do the sci-fi romance dystopian lens, like Divergent or... Um, Hungry Games didn't really have that issue, but like Divergent, it reminded me a lot of that. And I didn't mind Divergent, but it was just so cheesy. And the main character, what's her name? Her name was Ted, which I thought was so dumb. Um, and I mentioned this in my video, but I said I felt like her whole obsession with numbers almost felt like a tiny hint of OCD, and I couldn't tell the author was trying to do that, and I couldn't tell she was doing it in like a I'm representing OCD, or uh, how how OCD is funny. Oh, you see, we, so I've read, I've made, well, one of my friends made me read it, and I guess I'm just perpetuating the vicious cycle by making you read it. But it's such a fun book to complain about. That number thing was so annoying. It's like, ha, 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 I get it, Tenley. Oh, my gosh, this is so clever. Let me shove numbers in this book as much as possible. Oh my gosh, I just, ah! Uh. It was, and they were so random and unnecessary. Um, also, I don't know if you know this, you probably do, but Gina, Gina Showalter also writes adult romances. I, I have, and I've read a couple. And, and it, I was like, I cannot recommend this one to someone in high school. Well, it shows in her, her, in her um, 
YA books. I'm like, this this author obviously is used to writing adult romances. There was one scene where Ten and what's his name, the, the Irish sounding guy. Um, did you listen to the audiobook? No, I like but that. I'd be really curious because in the actual book, he is given an Irish accent, but it's not consistent. It's phonetically written. But it's not consistently phonetically written. Like, I found several cases where he was like, oh, you and your stuff, like, you know, like, and I'm like, how did, uh, uh. In the audiobook, it's consistent. Um, and it was so weird and out of nowhere to me. It didn't fit the character. I mean, it was oh, oh. Thing. It gets even better. Are you ready for this? Because I'm well versed in this lore. The Irish guy was a stillbirth baby. Huh. He grew up in the dead world, huh. and he is the only one in this entire world who has an Irish accent, despite being raised by the dead. So weird. It is so... It's like they didn't have a beta reader, or any consistency. Yeah. Um, oh, and it's also read the, the female, what, Ten. Tenley is married by Emma Galvin, who married a divergent. Oh, I love Emma Galvin. Like, she's oh, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree. Um, but, yeah, back to... There was one scene with Ken and Gillian is his name, I think. Yeah. Where they were, like, kissing and having their little sexy moment. And I was like, this is so uncomfortable because Ken's, what, 17? I think she's 17, right? And I was like, this is so uncomfortable because this is so oddly, like... It was detailed without being detailed. It just made me really uncomfortable through the adultness of it, and that this belonged in a mature adult book. There's like a whole scene where like they, it's like they're ramping up for like a shower sex scene, and I don't remember. Is this that? Is this that book? Okay. Yeah. And then she's all like, anyway, that's a whole nother thing. But like, uh, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. So cringy. Also. Um, Harry Cherries. That is, what's the other guy? The A guy? I honestly could not keep that. The other guy. The fact that he constantly made, like, lewd jokes. Like, you can check out my review. But, like, he constantly made all of these jokes. And it felt like, you know that meme? How are you doing, fellow kids? That's what his, like, everything he said felt like. She's like, oh, this is definitely what teenagers talk like. <sighs> yeah. Um, and then towards the end, I was just, I literally just stopped listening. This, yeah, it was in the background. It was so boring towards the end. I think listening to the audiobook would have been better because I had to physically read all of those words and it hurt so much. I think I might have gone too hard on the bad one for you. I'm sorry to feel guilty there. <laughs> It's okay. Um, the the like the literally the last sentence where she she signs over to what's it called? The one the afterlife. I was like, oh, that was kind of interesting. I wish the whole book had been half as interesting as that. I might have not hated it so much. Um, that was like the only interesting part. And I was like, maybe I should read the next book. And I was like, probably not. Because I don't gravitate to books like that. If you want me to tell you more about it, though, I've got the whole lore in the back of my head. Yes. There's seven cities for the entire world, like everyone on the world, and everyone's soul goes to those cities. And, like, some of them are Troika, some of them are Miriam. We don't ever find out why Troika and Miriam are fighting. They just are. Three books of this war and how important it is, but they've never figured it out. Now, here comes a crazy thing. But in the third book... We find out that all of the souls of animals also go to these seven cities. And all the unborn children also go to the seven cities. Now, it could just be me, but I feel like these cities are a little overpopulated, but they're shown constantly as a rural civilization. Which means that the whole purpose of the war is to kill the people after they died and then they go to that um, purgatory world and they can't get out. Unless you're Tenley, because the author likes it and she just comes back to life like five times in this book. I think the term is plot I think that's what it's called. Yeah. 
Yeah. So anyway, that, that theory about like why there is an overpopulation, that's purely mine. I'm like, this has to be the only reason. But yeah, apparently like unborn children go there, they develop, they become children. Which then begs the question, how early are we talking? Yeah, that's like, what I can ask. It's like, do do all eggs from women just go to heaven or whatever it is? I mean, anything that's fertilized that drops out, like, does it just make it there? I don't know. These are the important questions that nobody's answering for me in this allure. Um, yeah, it was a pretty bad book. Uh, fortunately, I think it was like nine, twelve hours long, and I was listening to it on triple speed, so it can die pretty quickly. That's not bad, yeah. yeah. Um, the next one, Sharp Objects. Sharp Objects, I enjoyed more. It was pretty predictable. Um, I think mostly because there was, it's Munchausen by Foxy stuff, and, and Emma. I've been calling her Emma, even though apparently her name is Emma, A-M-M-A. Um, yeah, Emma. But the narrators made it sound like Emma. Okay, Emma it is. Yeah, anyway, so there was the sociopath and the Munchausen, Munchausen by Foxy. That was really predictable for me, um, mostly because of, it's been a huge trope in thrillers lately, um, especially with Darling Rose Gold. Um, I should have thought of that, because that was actually published before it became like a huge trope, because this is a few years old. Yeah. This was my first time at this was that was my first time actually reading Munchausen by Proxy. So like I was like, Holy crap, what just happened <laughs> when I went through it? Yeah. Had I read it when it came out or years earlier, I probably would have not been a, a been more shocked, but it was pretty predictable. I did not enjoy it though. Um, I did like the the creepiness of Emma. Like, not knowing if she was just, like, eccentric or was she completely crazy. Mm -hmm. And I loved the ending where we find out that Emma was also killing people. It wasn't. The dollhouse tea. Yeah. Now, in the H, because H, it was either, I think it was Hulu. Hulu made, like, a, a limited miniseries thing for it. And everyone says the miniseries is a lot better than the book. Um, really? Because I, I, I enjoyed the book. I don't have to see the miniseries. I haven't seen the miniseries. It looks good. It has Amy Adams in it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think I think everyone liked it more in the show because the ending is a little more. The reveal is a little more kind of subtle. It's actually an end credit scene. So if you don't watch the end credit scene, you think that it was just Adora who did the killings. But interesting. Okay. Yeah. So I'm glad that you enjoyed that one at least. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then Princess Bride, or do you have any more thoughts on Sharp Objects? Um, oh, Sharp Objects. So it reminded me a lot of a book that I recently read called um, The Brightlands by John Graham. I actually got an audio advanced copy, and it came out, it came out mid July, like a couple of weeks ago. Anyway, because Brightlands is basically about this, um, it's basically like about gay, being gay in Texas, and football, and drama, and all of that stuff. It's really interesting, and I still have mixed feelings about it, um, but it's, I think it's worth a read. It's basically, it gave me the same small town mystery vibe. Main character comes back to the small town that they tried to run away from and kind of forget about it. Uh, they both have that same vibe, so I definitely recommend that. Okay, okay. Um, and then Princess Bride. So, again, I haven't read the book. The movie, I, it used to terrify me when it's there. Um, the quicksand scene was very scary to me. And so was the scene where he's put in the machine that, like, kills him. That scared me. Uh, it wasn't as scary this time around. Uh, and I enjoyed it. I would say, I probably would go with 3.5 or 4 stars for the movie. Um, it's great. And I do enjoy the humor. Cause it's very, it's very kind of hyperbolic. Um, the one time it kind of annoyed me was the scene where um, Wesley is in the bed and he can't move, and it's the prince guy is like saying, "I'm gonna kill you," and then Wesley is telling him about like never ending pain. All that I was like, "Why are you just standing there? Just seriously, just stab him. Like, he can't move. He just admitted to not being able to move." That was the one part where I was mildly annoyed. Yeah, it's definitely after all these years, like, I love the movie. I love the book. We pretend that the introduction doesn't exist for a reason. 
it's just such a quirky tale. And I spent like when I first read it, I didn't realize that there was there wasn't a longer version that the original author mm-hmm. pretended that there was a longer version. He cut it down for his story. Mm-hmm. And I spent so much time trying to find the original S.S. Morganston's tale. Mm-hmm. Never found it. Yeah. Well, I was confused by that a little too, um, a little bit too at first because like, wait, I read the synopsis. And like, oh, I get it. it. And in the movie, they turned it rather than being the author, it was the grandfather turning on the boy, which was a nice touch in my opinion. Yeah, it's one. Of, it's one of those books that is very true to the adoption. Mm-hmm. I think like the both of them are very good. Mm-hmm. Just the book has more like notes from the author, and it's just kind of like. I don't know. It's, it's hard to describe because like, I haven't read it in a long time, but I always loved the way the author just kind of threw his own opinion or talked about the way the classic tale differs from what he's doing. I love the child of living with either uh, for the people. Um, yeah. It was interesting. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts. Um, yeah. I think had you not told me uh, and this is another thing, because you told me how much you hated Gina Showalter, I did go into First Life with a bit of a bias. I think that I would have still hated it, but I was, like, from the start, ready to hate it, because of how much you told me you hated it. I'm sorry. I, sh- I should have been a little bit more careful with that. You should have told me, so I could have picked something different. That's okay. Um, yeah, and then what else? Oh, I also, in that, that time frame that I put it in my vlog, I read um, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, and I've been rereading the series. Right now, I'm listening to Half Blood Prince. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I have a bigger appreciation for the series. I'm noticing a lot more this time. And it That's is what I told separate. you. Mm-hmm. I totally called that, didn't I? Mm-hmm. It's so much. It's so well written. Um, interesting. So part of me wishes there was more, but then also there was the first child, and that was just a mess. Have you read First Child? It's really bad. Yeah, I, ha- I haven't read it yet. It's basically, I mean, it's basically poorly written fan fiction. Everyone just pretends that it doesn't exist. That's kind of why I haven't read it yet. All right. So, is that enough for the video, or do you want to like talk about anything else in specific? Um, I think that's enough. I think that's all my thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I can't wait to read mine. I've been just crazy busy. It's been insane how much we hoops we have to jump through trying to get back into like working in a lab right now. It's crazy, but yeah, yeah. Well, I can't wait to hear what you think of those writing. Yeah, I'm hoping that I'll be able to call you. Probably next week Sunday should give me enough time, give or take. Okay, let me see. But I might need one more week. Okay, that's fine. Because it's... Yeah, because I haven't gotten the audiobooks or anything. So. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, I do... I've done mostly audiobooks since quarantine started. I do mostly audiobooks. I don't think I've read... Oh, no. I read... I tried to read a physical book a couple weeks ago. I read half of it, and then I didn't like it, so I'd be in a bit. But I generally just do audiobooks more than physical books. I see. I love to do audiobooks, but right now I actually have to do thinking at my job. I can't just do like number inputs. So, like I have to pay attention, which is killing my audiobook vibe. Yeah. All right. Then I think this is it. Then. Yep. I'm not gonna do a fancy intro. I'm in my pajamas and I'm standing on the fireplace hearth. Deal with it. Thank you so much. Oops. There we go. Um, that was my thoughts. That was Miranda's thoughts. Those are the books. I will leave all the links to the things I said I would link to if I remember to. Hopefully I will after editing. Anywho, thank you so much for watching.